Good morning, everybody. Let's start today with an experiment. Does everyone remember the game of hide and seek when you're younger? Someone counts, the other runs and hides. And that person counting has to go seek the person, find the ones that were hiding. Let's try that with a twist. You're all going to be the seekers, whether you're at home or here. Everybody can play. And here's a twist. You're seeking love. Now, before we close our eyes, start counting. Let's think about this. Strategize. What are we going to do? How do you hunt that out? How do you seek out love? If we're heading in a direction, which direction do we head? Is love over in the closet? Is it back in the bathroom? Do we head up north, up 680? Do we head south down 101? Do we head to the coast, the mountains? If we rush out to our cars right now and head down 101 as fast as we can, how many days and how long do we travel before we find love? Well, unless you've got a loved one down on 101, which some of us do, but for those who don't, you'd be traveling an awfully long time, right? You never find love heading down the highway. We cannot physically seek out love. No matter how far you fly, drive, swim, love is not a spot on the map. And love isn't any specific physical place. How do we seek it out? But even though it's not a specific place, we've all experienced it, right? For those of us lucky enough to be here with your family, you look left to right, and there they are. For the rest of us, you look around this room. This is our church family. You look at each other, there's love. We've all experienced it. We've all found love. And love isn't on a map. But we all found it. So, ready to take this a little bit further? Round two, new game. All right. Again, you're all the seekers. You're going to know there's a trick. Next target, God. How do we find God? Now, we all know that God isn't hiding around the corner. God's not hiding at all. But how do we seek Him? We can't chase Him down and yell, tag, and run off, right? It doesn't work like that with God. <laughs> so what do we do? We know that we can find things that we can't touch from our first experiment. We just proved that. Just because we can't physically go to love, we found it. We've experienced it. So how do you seek out, do the same thing and seek out God and find Him? Well, let's look for some directions. If you would turn with me to Deuteronomy 10, verse 14. Deuteronomy 10, verse 14. Verse 14 reads, Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth, with all that is in it. So, okay, there you go. God is everywhere. Found Him. Case closed, right? Invitation song, we're all good. Ready to head out? All right. I'm seeing some faces like that's not right. <laughs> I see some, some doubt on your faces. So, but that would have been the easiest game of Where's Waldo ever, right? But is that satisfying? It's true, though. God is everywhere. This, everywhere you look, us, all things are His. But as humans, even though that is completely true, it's not satisfying for us humans, is it? We need more to really call the case closed. 
even though we have God all around us, you can never ex escape what he is. Just by simply existing, you technically have found God because we are in his creation. We cannot escape his presence. But in our heads, we need something more understandable and relatable, don't we? We are humans. We need something that we can understand and relate to other than simply saying God is omnipresent. So let's back up. Let's read what comes before that statement that starts with indeed. Because you ever notice, whenever something starts with indeed, it's a concluding statement, right? Indeed, here's the facts. Indeed, this is it. So if we've read the conclusion, what comes before that? Let's go back. If you're still Deuteronomy 10, let's go up to Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13. And so this comes before the conclusion statement. Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today, for your good. Before the conclusion, it starts with what God wants of us. God put a plan in motion from the very beginning from before time existed, that allowed us to be reconciled with him and to find our way back to him. If all of history led up to Christ, his death on that cross and our salvation, the gift of salvation coming from that, that allows us to be reconciled with God, it seems like God would have a map, right? Well, God does give us a map. So what is that? And it's in these verses here. It's actually all throughout the Bible. But we use these verses. They start at the beginning, so it's a good place to start. What is this map that God gave us? Fear the Lord your God. Walk in all His ways. Love Him. Serve Him with all your heart and your soul. But even that, taking it at face value, we need a little bit more explanation, don't we? But this... Simplest map ever. Two steps, bam, love him. Done, right? <laughs> it's incredibly simple. It's incredibly effective. Let's look into it. Because with God's word, it's beautiful. You can unwrap it. Let's take the first part. Fear the Lord your God. What that means is get to know God. Once we learn that God is God of gods, Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe, as you read down in verse 17. When we really understand that, it's actually impossible not to have some reverence for Him. Not to say, wow. <laughs> you got to have a healthy respect for a God like that. And so when you really know who God is, it comes natural. Once we truly understand that, it is a truly humbling experience. We will have the privilege to talk to God, to be able to reach out to the God who created the universe at any time in prayer. And you know what? We're doing experiments today. Let's do that. Let's do one more. Let's take a moment, exercise our privilege, and say a prayer prayer to God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, this privilege to be here, to be able to speak to you, be able to talk to the Lord of the universe. Father, you have blessed us so richly. Thank you. Father, please let us seek you with all of our hearts so that we find you and grow closer to you. Please guide us so we draw closer and closer to you, and learn more about you, who you are, what you want of us, and how we are to live. Thank you for the privilege of being able to do this, Father. Thank you for letting us be able to reach out and talk to you. 
Thank you for letting us be here in your presence. Thank you for all things. We love you, Father. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We pray at regular periods throughout service. And those prayers sometimes become just a part of service. We don't pay attention to them. Sometimes we just kind of go through them. The brothers today did an awesome job, and I appreciate every one of you. But for those that are listening, do you ever kind of zone out a little bit? But if you think about it, how can straight to our Father, straight to the God of the universe, when we truly think about what a privilege it is to be able to pray to God, it helps us realize who God is. And so that's the first part of the map, getting to know God. And one way to do it, talking to Him. So about walking all of His ways. After getting to know God, the next step on the map is walking all of His ways. And this essentially translates to spend time with Him, walk with Him. What happens when you're doing what God wants of you? You're listening to His Word. You're learning about Him. You're sharing His love with others. If you're working to walk in His ways, you have to spend time with Him. The two go hand in hand. And you walk with Him. Now let's turn to um, John 15. Let's go to the next one. Love Him. Let's turn to John 15, verses 9 and 10. Let's talk about this last step on the mount. After you know Him, you walk with Him, you spend time with Him. John 15, verses 9 and 10. Starting at verse 9, it reads, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. Doing what God wants is spending time with God. Jesus is explaining that we may not realize it, but the concepts go hand in hand with each other. If all history led up to God reconciling us to Him so that we can get back to Him, it makes sense that He wants us to spend time with Him. Now here's the trick. Anyone remember those shampoo bottles that you get and had some really straightforward directions? A little something like this. Lather up your head, rinse it off, repeat it. Simple, straightforward, right? Anybody can follow it. Now, if you follow those literally, you're going to use a whole bottle of shampoo in one shower, which is awesome for the manufacturers of the shampoo. Not so good for the budget. But if you take the idea is to keep doing it. Now, maybe waiting a day before you do it to repeat. You don't get too pretty in the shower. But the idea is to do it again. And that's what love him is about. Repeat those steps. Do it over. We get to know God. Know who he is. Spend time with him. And repeat until we love him. Now, think back where we started with this. Finding love, right? For those of us who are married, how do we find love with our spouses? Think back to those days. We would talk to them, right? We would get to know them. We'd spend time with them. We'd repeat until the love grew and we wanted to commit. We decided we wanted to commit and marry them. For those of us that are still married, how did that happen? That process continues indefinitely, doesn't it? Unless we still talk and recognize who our spouses are, spend time with them, and marriage is not going to last very long, right? Very quick. But if we do that, that marriage can go stronger and stronger by going through those simple steps. Now, God is smart. And that is no accident that finding love with our spouses kind of parallels with an analog of how we find God and go to love Him. Even for those who have never been married, the concept's a familiar one, right? 
You've all seen a movie, read a poem, heard a story, seen your parents. Love is a very easily relatable human event that we can relate to. So we have that event that we can, we can grasp, we can understand. How do we get to know God to the point that we commit to Him and give our lives to Him? Well, we're told to read. We're told or read about God. We learn something about Him, who He is. We studied, we listened, we learned, we practiced what we learned, and we prayed. We spent time with Him. We learned enough about Him that we were ready to commit and be baptized. We repeat the process so our love for God grows stronger day by day, year by year, throughout our lives. The same way you have a marriage that goes stronger and stronger. The process is incredibly easy. However, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the great God, that's still hard for us to comprehend, isn't it? It's hard for a human to wrap our minds around that. But, if we're honest about it, so is love. That's, that's a concept. But, just as we can find love, we can also find God. Even though God, the concept, is hard to comprehend, God is someone that we can all find as long as we seek Him, relate to the process, we can relate to the process of how we find Him. A concept like finding love is how you can find God. And that is how it works for us to find God. What about how it can work for others? As we go out into the community, as we talk to other folks, it can seem like a mystery, right? Difficult task of how do we reach out to those people, get them to God. But it doesn't have to be. That same simple recipe that worked for us is exactly how it can work for others. So what is that map to share? If you think about it, has anybody ever set up a friend? We introduce God, let them get to know Him, provide opportunities, spend time with Him. And you repeat it. And over time, to learn enough about Him, to want to commit to love God. I think about to your younger days. You had a friend, and you had another friend, and you wanted to meet the two to meet. The first time's group events, right? With God, a Bible study, some prayers, an invitation to worship services. It takes off. They want to spend their own time with God. They're studying, they're praying on their own. Given time, that love grows. Commitment starts to become natural. The relationship grows stronger. Those steps repeat. The love grows. Another brother or sister makes it to heaven. Back to God, His presence with us. It's a very simple message today. Because we're dealing with things that are hard for humans to understand. So I figured I'd keep it short. But as humans, we ask a simple question of, what's in it for me? What do I get out of it? And if we're seeking God, why do it in the first place? What's the point? Well, we end up seeking God because we are humans. We're the ones who wander away from God. We're the ones that leave Him and go far afield from where we're supposed to be. And where we're supposed to be is close to God. The seeking, it's spending time learning who God is. Learn how wonderful the love of God is. Learn how good it is to live a life close to God. Our seeking is learning where we should have been and what we should have been doing the whole time. And God gave us these directions, as with all instructions, for our own good. The act of seeking God returns us to where we should have been the whole time, close to God. It reminds us who we really are. We're family. 
the Almighty God. And today, if you have not sold out and found God, now is as good a time as any to start. If you've been seeking God and are ready to make a commitment to Him in baptism, water is always available. You can always find water. If there's anything that you need to make known or need the prayers of the congregation, please come forward as we stand and sing the invitation song.